Yes, sir. Yeah, that we can do, but uh, people, if they join late, they will be missing, and I would also be missing the uh, missing the flow, right? So why didn't they join in time? Actually, sir, parallel programs are uh, going on. That's okay. maybe exactly. Yeah, and connectivity issues may be also there. Yes, in the evening time, actually, yeah. the connection issue arises. So, Prem Kumar is there. Prem Kumar had sent me the mail. I think he will be the coordinator, student coding. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please start the session then. Okay. Good, good evening, everybody present over here. This is the second session of the fourth day. We have our respected speaker with us, Mr. Sh uh, Dr. Shubhraji Dash. He, uh, today he will be talking on uh, the file system and main memory security and forensics, current research trends and opportunities. So before our speaker starts our, the topic, let me introduce, let me uh, introduce you with the, uh, introduce him uh, with our respected speaker. Dr. Shubhraji Tash is an associate professor in the department of CSC at NIT Durgapur and has a 20 plus years of teaching and research experience. He has a PhD, MTech and BTech in CSC. His research interests primarily include systems security, digital forensics and distributed system. However, his academic interest extends to computability topics in theoretical computer science as well. He teaches theory of computing distributed system information and system security and open source systems. He serves as a reviewer of many international journals and is a TPC member of the Journal of Digital Investigations, Elsevier. So without any further delay, you please continue with your yeah. Uh, topic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so good evening all. Um, I hope you were enjoying the, the workshop, uh, overall workshop, and uh, you were introduced to several different topics, um, starting from uh, national in initiatives to law in cybersecurity and cybercrime, right? So um, uh, as per the schedule, my topic was file system security and memory forensics. But uh, from the experience that I gathered from the last time I met you uh, in the first lecture, I found that uh, the audience is a bit wide, right, Mrs. Saha? The audience is a bit wide and uh, there are many people from first year. Yeah, there are many people from first year. So specifically third year and fourth year students uh, is not the audience of this class. And this classroom extends beyond uh, beyond that. And uh, we have many different participants uh, from first year as well. And they were uh, interacting with me in the first lecture. And I found that there, are, there were several topics, there were several terms that they are not acquainted with yet. Am I wrong, Prem? Prem, are you here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was talking with uh, Dr. Giri. And, uh, uh, and and what I thought was to, to extend what I was talking about and then slowly introduce you with the topics of file system security and memory forensics, right? Because there is uh, uh, there will be absolutely no meaning if I directly plunge into those, those topics and people find it difficult to understand, okay? So I will, uh, I will start my whiteboard as usual, right? Because that makes a better impact and let me share my whiteboard. <clears throat> okay. Is the whiteboard visible? Okay. So uh, I was talking about, uh, let me have a, a very brief, uh, yeah, very brief, brief uh, recollection of what we were talking about in the, in the first lecture. So we were talking about uh, computing aspects, uh, security aspects of computing systems, right? Security aspects. 
of computing systems. Now, I was telling you that um, computing systems in one end of the spectrum, you have your personal devices. That may be a PC, that may be a mobile phone, anything that you use to do some computing of any type, right? And computing encompasses everything from uh, calculation of uh, and operations on numbers to message passing, anything is computing. You have a processor and you have a memory and you compute, right? So at one end of the spectrum, you have personal devices and it extends to as complex a system as a distributed system. So this is how I try to uh, make, I try to visualize computing systems in front of you, right? Distributed systems. And another example of, the best example of a distributed system is the internet. And there are many terminologies that uh, you people often hear, IOTs, edge computing, uh, cloud computing, right? So these are all examples of distributed systems. So my, my intention is to, un, to make you understand this span. So this span talks about the inherent complexity in thinking about security, right? So security aspects of computing systems, we should be able to deal with security aspects starting from personal devices to security aspects of uh, yeah, as complex systems as distributed systems. And that should be that should be very comprehensive in nature. Now what exactly I mean by comprehensive in nature? What, what, how do I define that my approach of providing security, my approach of providing security to, uh, to, to, to a wide range of uh, uh, elements or subjects like personal devices, two distributed systems, this whole span should be comprehensive. What I mean by this is these as there are many aspects in such computing systems. So as the complexity increases, increases, it gives rise to um, many mutually dependent Uh, impacts. So what I mean is that computing systems has components, right? And I was, as I was saying, that uh, within these components, you have to identify trusted components and there are not so trusted ones, components, right? And e these components, trusted components, there may be n such n number of such trusted components, right? Among these n number of trusted components, these components will both increase in uh, number and complexity as, as we go from simple personal devices, personal computing devices to distributed systems. For example, in a personal computing device, this n may be a very small number, n number of trusted components in a computing system, this n may be a very small number, and the, and the mutual dependence between each of these ends may be small. But as you go towards design of a distributed system, there is also a computing system. These n may be large and the dependence may be, may, be, may be much more. The complexity may be much more. So our overall goal should be, since, since we have defined computing systems uh, in, in terms of, uh, if I remember properly, we have defined in, in terms of um, uh, um, what do you say, information society. So computing system can be viewed as an information society, right? And that in that information society, we have our individual goals, right? We have our interests. And when these all these things transcends to security aspects, then the whole concept of studying security is to protect our goals and our interests against adversaries, adversaries or attackers, right? And we also define in the first, uh, first lecture, 
what are these goals and uh, interest uh, uh, look like like how they can be named and first of all what comes in our mind is the cia confidentiality integrity availability these are the basic goals that we should be having in our mind when we do some computation what i mean is that um, uh, the information that i deal with the information that i pass between machines the information that i pass between programs the information the data that i pass between functions the parameters that i pass when i call a function everything should be kept secret from unauthorized access so for example i am calling a function i don't want somebody to intercept my call and change the parameters because if somebody intercepts my call and change the parameters the function will not uh, will not reply in a way that it was desired to do so that is confidentiality i want to keep things confidential to me to my usage availability what is availability uh, for example think of a, a web server that web server serves your requests you are the clients so uh, we need to protect the web server from any such any any sort of attack such that the web server stops making its information available to us right so the data or the action that that we expect from from a service should be should be available to us this is availability what is integrity integrity is uh, uh, that when we when we are dealing with objects in a in a system those objects state should be unmodified or if at all modified it should be detectable right so this is integrity and in the last lecture i gave an example of a simple message being passed from uh, from machine 1 to machine 2 and here integrity plays a role uh, what if the question is what if the message that that you send to the receiver has been changed in the middle right and the message that the receiver receives is not the message that you had intended to send so in that case we'll see we'll say that the integrity of the message is lost so these are our goals these are our interests the basic goals and interests that we need to protect from attackers so attackers will try attackers will try to 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 disrupt your computing and try to attack on all these properties on all your goals so these are your goals right and there are other goals also these are the basics so if you go through any standard textbook on information security will you will you will see something called the cia triad it's called the cia triad the confidentiality integrity and availability and i also talked about something called authenticity it deals with uh, that it it deals with that some data some data that we that we deal with um in our computation maybe when we start the computation maybe when we end the computation or maybe somewhere in between that data uh, that data uh, that the origin of the origin of the data uh, is always a user right yes, there is always some user who is working with the data and that user should have proved that that uh, that uh, um, the, the, the 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 data that he is dealing with is authentic in nature right so that it's it's again a property it's again a goal that needs to be protected from uh, attackers and there are other also like uh, non repudiation repudiation now this non repudiation uh, is a property that says that if there is a sender s who is sending a message m to receiver r this message should be tightly bound with s in some aspect so that when receiver r receives this message he understands that this message was sent by sender s this is a message from sender s and in case of in case of uh, in case of any 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 future uh, inquiry the message should be proved to to have originated from s so s cannot s cannot deny that this is not the message that i had sent so if r receives a message that has been sent by some sender s and at 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 some later point of time sender s cannot deny that okay i i didn't i didn't send 
from mailing system. So if I if I have a verified mailing address, and if I send a mail to you, at no later point can I deny that this mail was not sent by me. So if that mail was sent by if that that mail was sent by me in a proper setting in a in a in a in a, in a proper secure setting, I would always uh, be forced to accept that uh, I was the person who had sent the mail. So I cannot. I cannot just I cannot just uh, say that okay uh, I didn't send the mail somebody else has sent it to you then you can say that no sir the mail came from your account and that means you are the sender of this mail and the whole mailing system is a secured one there was no changes in between there is a guarantee that there was no changes in between for example Gmail Gmail is a very secure platform and we can generally assume that using Gmail and using the HTTPS protocol, when you use Gmail, you use it from the web with HTTPS protocol, right? Everybody knows this. And you can say that, okay, there is some level of transport layer security that says that, okay, uh, when I send a mail using a uh, authentic mail address, uh, I can always expect, I can always expect, listen to me properly, I can always expect uh, if not, I am 100% sure, but I can always expect with some uh, threshold that that particular mail has reached my intended receiver if the mail IDs are correct and authentic. So if the mail IDs are correct and authentic, see the application of authenticity, right? And, 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 and so that mail ID is my identity, right? So all the messages I pass from that mail ID identifies those messages with my identity and at no later point of time, I can say that, okay, this is not a mail that was sent by me. Uh, practical areas, practical attacks on non reputation What happens is you, you, may, you may think of some threat mails, you may think of cyber bullying sort of attacks, cyber bullying sort of attacks. Now, these are very common things in these days, right? Cyber bullying is a notorious sort of attack that disrupts your social life. And what happens is, for example, I am the, I am the attacker, I send you threat emails, and then you 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 com you go to the police with a complaint, and I then deny that okay those those mails were not sent by me. So as long as you are we both are using a proper secured uh, mailing platform, I can never say that those mails were not sent by me. Got my point? So I cannot deny that those mails were not sent by me. So immediately non reputation is a goal or is a a security interest that needs to be provided or that needs to be taken care of in this sort of attacks. So that the attackers will, should think twice that if I send a threat mail, my identity is very tightly bound. It, is, it should be considered to be authentic and I cannot, I cannot do something like non-repudiation. Right? Another is, so something associated with this property is also called accountability. So I should be held accountable accountability. I should be held accountable for all my actions in a digital platform, for example. I gave you examples. And another very um, important thing and that relates to confidentiality, but it's a, it's, it can be treated as a different goal. And that is, um, that is called um, um, anonymity. So this is another goal. At some point of time, anonymity is, is, is important. For example, what is anonymity? Anonymity means that, uh, that my activities, I want to keep my activities secret. If I, if I have a domain of activities and if I want to keep my activities secret, there is nothing harm in that, right? Because that immediately deals with some property called privacy. So as you demand your, your private space in all spheres of life, right? You demand your private space in social life. Similarly, you should be demanding, there is nothing wrong if you demand your private space in computing life. And if you at all demand that private space in computing life, and if there are applications that, that are sold to you that claim that your privacy will be kept intact, obviously there will be attacks on that perception and people will try to break your privacy. People will try to take your privacy out. So these are the general goals, right? Hope you understood. Now, Prem, things are simple, right? Yeah, Prem, hello. 
Anybody listening to me? Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So things are simple, right? So, uh, so, so, yeah. So the whole picture turns out something like this: you have security goals, you have security goals, and those will be obviously having adversaries. Now, how you protect your security goals? How you protect your security goals? How you protect your security goals is a topic of discussion on security design, implementation, verification, and mechanisms. Right. So, how you defend your goals? Taking care of. thinking of adversaries thinking of different attack patterns how you take care of all these things is a, is a subject area of uh, discussion on security design implementation verification and mechanisms right so security uh, mechanisms encompasses all these things so when i talk about a security mechanism it should have a proper design it should have a proper documented implementation it should have it should be properly verified and then only we can talk about uh, something uh, as a, as a mechanism right and when designing security mechanisms i talked about three key factors on one hand right three key factors um three key engineering uh techniques three key engineering techniques for better design of security mechanisms and those were redundancy isolation right yes and indistinguishability and i took an example uh, of a sender sending some message m through an open channel that is subject to attack this channel this channel is not uh, protected by some transport layer security like http ps protocol right standard transport layer protocol that protects channels with uh, with security is called the uh, transport layer protocol and that protocol is used with the https sort of applications that you use in the web right so let this has no tls and this is an open channel and you want to send a message m there is a sender the sender wants to send a message m to some receiver right now you can think of this setting within your own system also this setting of sending messages can be thought of in your own standalone systems also in the next page i will explain so what you do you apply redundancy in isolation and indistinguishability and what you do is you encrypt message m you encrypt message m and then you put some fault tolerant information and then you put some checksum and send the whole thing right you send the whole thing through this medium so the message is in the core most and that to encrypted and the receiver he needs to authenticate himself uh, to be the proper receiver of the message he needs to authenticate authenticate itself to s that okay i am the proper receiver and if he is the if r is the proper receiver he will be having a key a secret key right and with that key he can slowly unveil this message this check some he can check whether the message was uh, whether the integrity of the message is okay or not if some portion of the message is lost he can recreate the message with the fault tolerant information here and then he has the encrypted message and once he has proved to be the correct receiver to the sender he will be having a key and he can decrypt the message and get the message m right so since you are sending the message through an open channel you need to take care of these extra things and why did i tell you that you can you can think of the whole situation in a standalone scenario also just think of your 
computing system, a standalone computing system, and you are making a function call with parameters P1, P2, P3, right? And just change the setting and think of this function call to be a system call, right? You think of this to be a system call. System call. Now, what is a system call? I was explaining in the last class. What is a system call? They are the, the, the user space is generally protected from the kernel space. Rather, it should be the opposite. The kernel space is usually protected from the user space. So in the user space, you have user programs running P1, P2, right? So let P1 wants to send a message or write to a file owned by P2. P1 wants to write to a file owned by P2, right? Now, he has to take the services of the operating system and go like this. He has to he has to take the services of the operating system like writing to a file because actually files are owned by the operating system, the kernel of the operating system. And this is the system call interface. Now, if your system call interface is not protected, I can choose an adversary setting, adversary. I can choose an adversary who changes these parameters, right? and changes them to P1 prime, P2 prime, P3 prime, all three together or one at a time or two at a time or a combination of both. And after changing these parameters, the system call is executed and you can frame an attack on the operating system. I can show you. But since there are, there are many people from the first year group it will not be wise to directly go through system call descriptions and explaining such things. But I can I can say you from where these sort of attacks can arise. Why? Why these sort of attacks arise? That I can explain um, simplicity, right? In more simplistic manner. Okay. So as I was saying, let us come back. So uh, to to to. To explain you with a proper uh, understanding, I thought of uh, coming back to the basics, and I thought of uh, I thought of uh, explaining you basic computing and discussing the vulnerabilities that come out of them, and then describing the attacks. Right. So let this be the physical layer. Physical layer, right? So what do you have in the physical layer? You have the you have the processor you have main memory and you have externals right right this is this is what you have in the physical layer Right? This is what you have in the physical layer. I don't know from where a box came up. I'm sorry. Okay. And now, above this physical layer, what you have is distinct layers. First of all, you have the operating system, right? Or you have machines, machine languages, machine language interpreters. Right. Then you have assemblers. I'm giving a very, very rough schematic. And then you have the operating system. Now keep in mind, more modern operating systems is an ensemble of all these three layers. And then you have a programming language uh, interpreter or you can say a uh, programming system, right? And then you have applications. So this is how your computing system looks like. So applications take help of a programming platform and write their programs and talk to the operating system via shells you know shell programming, right? 
you talk with the operating system via shells or commands and everything is converted to assembly and then machine language and you have a proper machine language interpretation and your program is loaded in memory and instructions are taken from main memory to the processor for execution, right? And you have externals like keyboards and mice. This is what you have. Now, if I if I if I draw if I draw this uh, if I draw what is there in a processor, things will be more clear. I don't know why it's not coming. Yeah. Okay. So what is there? Most important thing is you have um, Control, instruction, interpreted, interpreter, right? And you have uh, ALU and you have transfer logic. Those are the things that you have. And in memory, what you have, you have nothing. Plain, simple blocks of memory based on the size of the accumulator of the processor, right? So generally we work with 32-bit machines or 64-bit machines. You have nothing, but some great men like Alan Turing and Von Neumann. I hope you know their names. They come up, came up with an idea of the stored program model. And they said that program and the data that the programs deal with can be stored in the same place. In memory. Yes, Prem, are we aware of all these things? So they came up with, uh, with, uh, with this model and I will show you how this model opens up vulnerabilities. If not properly taken care of, right? So, um, so what we have, we have, we have this structure in a very basic way. And what I mean to say is, that uh, that this structure, what the most important thing is, this structure, this schematic is very universal in nature. Universal. Right? This, this design is very universal in nature in the sense, why I say that this is universal in nature? It is universal in nature in a sense that if, if, if if Prem provides me with a suitable program, any computable task can be performed, right? If Prem's friend provides me with a with a suitable program, see, I am talking about a suitable program, suitable program. That means a computable program, a, a program that is computable in polynomial time. A program that is, that converges in finite time, a program that is a, a, a program that is a program in true sense. It has a finite number of steps and it does finite number of computations and it converges in finite time. That is what I mean. So if Prem or anybody, so once I say Prem or anybody, what I mean is that anybody, right? If anybody who 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 if, if anybody gives this structure. Uh, a, a computable program, a suitable program that, that, that should converge in polynomial time. Keep in mind there are many programs that do not converge in polynomial time and those, those, those programs uh, need to be framed in a different way. So I'm not talking about those programs, I'm talking about computable programs. So university, universe, universal, universe, universe being universal, this model being universal uh, means that, that it is in principle that if anybody provides a suitable program, any compute, computable task, any task that is computable in nature can be performed, right? And that, that is that we owe, we owe this property to, to something called the stored program model and to Alan Turing 
and von Neumann. So it was von Neumann who designed this this machine architecture uh, and, 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 and provided us with machines. And it is as real as von Neumann and as theoretical and abstract as the Turing machine. So when you'll be uh, studying theoretical computing, you will come across the Turing machine. And Turing says that if a program can be stored in main memory along with its data, if we don't distinguish between program and data when we store, the model becomes universal and we can do anything, in, uh, any, any computation in finite time, right? Now, this program storing uh, makes this system uh, very powerful, but also vulnerable. That is what I mean. Now, let me come back to security and explain you why this, uh, this setting, this extremely powerful universal machine brings in vulnerability and how. Now, since in the stored program model, since program and its data are both stored in the same place, then there is every possibility that somebody, some attacker, some adversary succeeds. After many trials, for example, he succeeds in storing a malicious program, a program mm. that is malicious in nature. A program that is malicious in nature if he succeeds in storing this program in your main memory, then your processor and the transfer logic portion of the processor can be very well fooled and the processor may blindly execute some malicious codes, lines of code. Right? And since this design is universal, there are no such checks whether, whether some portion of code or some portion of program, whether it is malicious or not, as long as as long as, 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 as that program is a suitable program, right? And the whole, whole family of viruses, Trojan horses, and, and, uh, and malicious uh, computing worms, so viruses, so Trojan horses, worms, and all these things, they just bank on this vulnerability. So viruses, Trojan horses, so by now, I think you are acquainted with the terms viruses, Trojan horses, worms, right? Because you had so many classes on uh, cybersecurity. So without knowing these terms, uh, I think you should be knowing these terms by now. So the whole family of viruses, Trojan horses, worms, bank on this vulnerability. The simple vulnerability. They, 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 they find a way to put a malicious program in memory, and they find a way to trigger that trigger that action, and uh, and this universal nature is exploited, and some malicious code is run, and that malicious code can be as dangerous as wiping out wiping out your file system, or it may be it it may be as dangerous as encrypting your file. System. What is a file system? A file system is a is a is a logical uh, definition. It's a it's a it's a logical layout on your hard drives, on your secondary secondary devices. I have not shown secondary devices here. Here by memory, I mean the main memory, right? Main memory where programs get executed. So a file system is a is a is a logical layout put as the overlay on 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 your on your uh, on your secondary drives. And it can be, this type of attacks can be as dangerous as wiping out your whole file system, or it may be, it may be no less dangerous as encrypting your whole file system. It means that some malicious intruder may find a way to encrypt your whole hard disk. And you cannot, you cannot access your hard disk because you don't have a suitable key to decrypt it. Do you know what this sort of attack is called? If I name it, you'll be very happy. This is called the very popular ransomware. Attack. Yeah, ransomware attack. Ransomware attack. Now, what is this ransomware attack? Somebody encrypts your 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 whole hard disk space. So by five, I indicate the hard disk space. Everything, the whole file system. 
right? And you can you can only find an inverse of this encryption and find back what is in phi HDD only if you have you can you can find the inverse only if you have the decryption key. So decryption of encryption of phi will give you phi. So so what happens is intruders find a way to exploit this basic vulnerability. See, the vulnerability is very basic. The techniques of attacks are are, are more uh, intriguing. The techniques of attacks are more uh, people are very intelligent out there who, who who frames these attacks. So what happens is this. The, the whole thing is based on this universality. So if this was not this much universal, if there were tags to identify between a good program and a bad program, if there was a mechanism to, to identify between a good program and a bad program, then perhaps this type of attacks would have never happened. But the universality of, of this design says that there is no such distinction between a good program and a bad program. There is no such distinction between uh, good data and a bad data. A program is a program and data is data. Right? And at, and, and at the lowest level, program and data are indistinguishable. See, I was talking about indistinguishable property as a goal, right? I hope you remember. I was talking about indistinguishability. So that indistinguishability says that program and data are indistinguishable because in your CPU, things happen with addresses. Right? In your CPU, things happen with addresses. The, 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 the CPU says that uh, the, the, trans, the transfer logic portion of the transfer logic portion of the CPU goes to the RAM and fetches some particular portion of the memory and takes it to the takes it to uh, the CPU for execution. And that particular portion of memory that can be that can be tagged as whether it's a whether it's a, it's a it's an instruction or data, right? That mechanism you have, but you don't have a mechanism to say, okay, this is a good program and this is a bad program. A program is a program. It is universal in design. Data is data. All its zeros and ones. Only in specific portions of uh, memory, there are special tags with which you identify that, okay, this is a line of code and this is not data because at the end of the day, everything is zeros and ones. In memory, right? So, so this universality, university, this universal design gives you this. Uh, uh, this gives you uh, this vulnerability as dangerous as removing everything in your hard drive, or or as dangerous as encrypting your whole hard drive. And what is the ransomware attack? Now, once people have once people have encrypted your hard drive successfully. He has done an encryption on your file and he he asks for money, right? He asks for dollars, he asks for rupees, anything, he asks for money. And he says that if you give me money, I will give you the decryption key. And only with the decryption key you can do this. So what I mean is that universal design. So the reason is very simple, right? That universal design. gives such vulnerability. Right? So uh, solution. Now I'll show you, I will I will I will just talk to you and discuss with you that the solutions can be provided, countermeasures can be provided, for example, some facilities uh, to, to restrict such universal nature of the uh, of the of the machine can be can be given. There are solutions. So people doing research in operating systems and people doing research in processors may come up with solutions. And people have often come up with solutions that we restrict this universal nature and we provide um, and 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 uh, and we provide a mechanism so that program storing itself. Uh, can be taken to a different level, and and uh, and we can uh, uh, we can uh, we can say uh, add tags to activities that based on statistical measures, of course, right? Now there is a fundamental question. The fundamental question is: uh, 
since we we told that security is multilateral in design there are there are many people in the act there are many subjects for example if we since we are talking about the file system a file system has multiple owners of its of its many files a file system has many files right and not all files are owned by the 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 the, the administrator right there are many files that are owned by different users cascaded according to their uh, according to their capability so capabilities of users are taken into account and there are different files that are owned by different people the file system itself being an operating system property is owned by the administrator in linux systems it is popularly known as root and all these things it's 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 very multilateral in design so who will ultimately have the power of such countermeasures so for example uh, the researchers of the os domain or researchers in the processors domain come up with a solution the os people came up with some solution that okay this universal nature should be reduced in such and such way i give you for example four ways to reduce this universal nature and the and the people in processor industry research come up with with some special registers with some special um special values to to say that okay if 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 these registers are containing some special tags it will indicate that this is a good program this is a bad program any any such mechanism they may come up with but the fundamental question uh, the the fundamental question concerning to overall security remains if we deploy all such mechanisms to reduce the universality with four points now ultimately who will own such uh, we own such countermeasures right does it make sense ultimately who will own the countermeasures who will own the countermeasures it's a big question again who will own the countermeasures for example the os people and the and and the and the processor researchers came up with countermeasures right now who will own these countermeasures there are several different parties to the whole system i just give the example of the file system there are so many other things in the system and if you if we scale it your system from a stand alone system to a distributed system there are so many n number of other parties into it there may be so many number of virtual uh, so many number of virtual machines there 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 may be so so many number of cloud service providers now who will be the who will be the owner of such counter measures it's a big security question and generally these are the security questions that deal with the global aspects of cyber security ownerships ownerships of both objects and ownerships also relate to security measures who will own the security measure now there may be individual who owns a security measure and who himself is compromised for example if we if we if we think about the operating system we generally think of the operating system as 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 a trusted computing object right a, a object that we can trust now what if this is a fundamental question what if your operating system and the root user is compromised generally in a stand alone setting it is it is it is uh, it is if if it is not trivial but it is easy it is easy to secure your root because it's a stand alone system now when you scale it your system your computing system from the concept of stand alone system to a distributed system a full fledged distributed system then there may be multiple such root os users right and in that multiple multilateral setting of dependencies Uh, you you never know who who has been compromised right it's much like the covid situation now you never know you are you are going to a you are going to a theater you never know who has been compromised with the covid virus you never know the it, 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 there may be a single person who is compromised and he may be uh, he may be spoiling the whole show right the same thing you can you can relate everything to to to, to societies that is what i mean now this question is extremely important and this triggers that fundamental question triggers all research pertaining to cyber security
right? It encompasses design, law, verification, audits, everything. Right? Now, uh, another important thing. So let us come back to the processor. Let us come back to the processor. I will give you another very simple thing that, that you might not, might not have ever thought of. Now let us come back to this processor, right? Yes, this processor. Let me write it slowly. This processor. Now what is this? What is this? This is a piece of hardware, a very simple piece of hardware with some built-in memory call registers. So this is a very simple piece of hardware with some built-in piece of memory called registers, right? And often these registers, some of these registers come with some predefined tags, for example, to, 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 to provide some security to the universal model as I was talking about, right? But the problem is that this Products, these small hardware chips are produced in mass. For example, Intel is not going, Intel is not going to make one single processor for print, right? It will make one million processors for 1920 financial year, for example. And this single processor instance does not have an identity so that it, a single processor stands out from one million. It produces, for example, Intel will produce one million identical processors. So let me come back to this game altogether. So they will produce, for example, one million identical processors. There's no way in which you can distinguish processor, processor, uh, processor N-1 with processor N. They are exactly same from all aspects. All what aspects? Computational aspects. That this processor, the NF processor, comes with a number it is a very superficial thing. That's for the business for business policy, right? When you buy a processor, it comes with a number. But that number has nothing to do with the internal design of the processor. The internal design of the processor N minus one and the processor NF processor are exactly the same. It has the exact same number of registers and it has the exact same number of everything and it has the exact same logic. It has the exact same view, it has exact same semiconductor base, everything, right? And this identical being, being this being identical gives rise to, uh, gives rise, this actually makes, this actually is an indistinguishable property. Indistinguishable property. Right? This is very obvious. Why? Because, for example, I go to the market to buy a Pentium 5 processor, Pentium 5 10th gen processor with a, with a specific model number. So I should be expecting to, to get the exact thing as frame gates, right? If we are spending the same amount of money. That, what does that mean? It means we both have identical processors. That is what I mean. Now, this, the whole picture turns out as, what is the time? Let me check my mobile. It's already six. Okay. The whole picture turns, turns out as universal 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 design of computing system plus Processor, not only processor, all hardware, right? Hardware level. Um, what term did I use? 
indistinguishability, right? Indistinguishability. This whole picture turns out as the universal nature of a computing system plus processor or hardware level indistinguishability gives rise to a whole new set of attacks called masquerading. And there may be serious compromise with data being processed, messages or messages being passed, anything, right? Anything. These are the general two things that we do in computer. So it gives that to masquerading. What do I mean by this? I mean, what I mean by this is a single program. I, let me extend this box. A program P may be well replaced by program P prime and a processor PR1 may be replaced by processor PR2 without any pain, right? So if I have physical access to your machine, I can just change the processor and in that changed processor, I make something, I, I make some changes, and I make some uh, make some changes so that you have, so that the user who is running, so that, so that the universal machine, it seems, it sees that, okay, I'm running a program anyway, there's no way I can distinguish between a good program and a bad program, and I somehow replace a good program with a bad program, this is a bad program, this is a virus, this is a malicious one, malicious program, right? I replace this program, and I also manage to replace processor one with processor two because both are indistinguishable. But in processor two, I rewrite some, I rewrite some code, right? I rewrite some, uh, I, 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 I devise some mechanism with which I can tamper with with the activities of the processors. Uh, for example. Um, what 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 we can do by replacing a processor, by replacing a processor, and by changing how the processor behaves, I can just say that when you intend to use the EDX register for some operation in your machine, I will do that operation with some other register, and I will I will store some value in this EDX register that will get appended to your program every time you run that program. That can be done. Got my point? So universal design gives rise to enormous opportunities, and that is that is the well accepted standard, and the von Neumann architecture and the abstractness of Turing is our modern computers. You cannot do anything without that universal feature, and that universal feature brings in vulnerabilities, right? Processor level indistinguishability that is important. Otherwise, processors cannot be manufactured in mass, and that also brings in vulnerabilities. And these two together brings in a hell of a vulnerabilities. Got my point? So, uh, so what can what can be done is um, uh, some uh, uh, some recent processors uh, they they claim that uh, that. Uh, uh, there should be that that every 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 unit of processor that 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 I manufacture comes with some uh, comes with some identity of the processor. So you put in identities, identities, identities of the processor in some temper instance temper instance way, and that is a part of uh, part of study called hardware security, right? So you implant some, you implant some, you intend to implant some uh, um, uh, identifiers, and that can be automatically appended uh, to 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 your to whatever you process. Um, but uh, what will happen is this identifying identifying each unit of processors ultimately ultimately will make this perspective of indistinguishability uh, lesser, right? It will lessen the perspective of indistinguishability and 
if you don't have indistinguishability at uh, at at maximum um, you cannot uh, you cannot actually achieve what you what you seem to achieve with the universal design and 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 uh, uh, same identity of uh, all processors right so uh, that is that can be done but uh, the problem is see when you when we when you uh, if, we, if we talk about in general hardware for example let us let us take the discussion away from processors and let us speak about input devices let us talk about input devices if you remember i drew a picture something like this physical devices you have the processor you have the main memory components and you have the input devices right now if you if you talk about input devices you can visualize better because because many of you are in the first year right so input devices so input devices if you think of and if you think of putting identities of each input device that means actually you are you are you are you are you are uh, no longer no longer intending to to keep input devices indistinguishable they are no longer indistinguishable in a fact that i said okay this is prem's keyboard this is my keyboard this is his keyboard but the initial notion was not that initial notion notion was it's a keyboard with some specifications right it's a keyboard with certain number of keys and its orientation and anybody on the keyboard may 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 sit and do some programming that was the intention right and that that is why it was indistinguishable in design but now for example uh, i no longer intend to keep things indistinguishable because of those attacks that i was talking about and i make things more personalized so what does that mean it means that i am adding some identities that will identify this keyboard with frame i am adding some identity that will identify this keyboard with me and i am adding some identity that will identify that keyboard with him right so there are three different keyboards which are hardware wise same but i am i am adding some identities for example the keyboard has a biometric sensor on the left and if i if i and it comes with a battery now the design of the keyboard has changed right now it comes with a battery and it has a biometric chip and if i press my finger there there will be a checking whether it is my fingerprint or not if it is my fingerprint then i am allowed right so this is personalization of gadgets this is from where it evolved so that so that a particular user is tightly bound with his identity right now we are talking about security in this class right so obviously i will go here and there but come back to security what is the security problem with this the security problem with this is that uh, the, these hardware instances these keyboards that belong to prems that belongs to me that belongs to him all these all these all these uh, things now needs to be now needs to be very well protected because it contains your fingerprint or it may contain your some other identity and some sort of security issue like it may be it may be it may be destroyed by some adversary it may be stolen if it is lost you have extra tension right you have to you have to go and make an fir that a, a keyboard with such and such fingerprint is missing and it may involve extortion also and that may not be limited to may not be limited to physical extortion only that may be logical also you may have your identities with all activities that you do and with all messages that you pass and that may be that that may be in fact used for extortion of uh, there are many, many many attacks that can use it for Uh, for uh, this sort of security problems so what i mean is in today's class i wrap up and i hope 
I have to come again if you uh, if you if you are specifically third year and fourth year students who have a strong grasp on operating systems and uh, networks and distributed systems, then I can again come on upon request because I love to teach. And then I can delve into details of file system and memory forensics, right? Because there are so many things that you need to know. Uh, today and in the first lecture, I tried to keep things as wide as possible because I, I really cared about the first year students. So lectures should not be anything that, 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 that will be boring and that will not be understandable by all. Okay? So that ends my lecture. If you have any questions, you may ask me. You can ask questions. So there is one question by Rana Mitra. Please say yeah. about yeah. SPM. Yeah, please say about what? SPM. Rana, you can directly ask your questions to sir. Yeah. Yeah, Rana, please show your face. Let me see you. Please unmute yourself, Rana. Yeah, Rana. Rana Mitra, right? Yes. Yes, Rana? Yeah. What do you want to know? Yeah. What do you want to know? Rana, you are from first year or third year? Tell me. Yeah, Rana, I'm a very friendly person. You can talk to me. Yes. You know, see me. See how, how I am friendly. I'm a very friendly person. You can talk to me. Rana Mitra. This Okay, no problem. You can type in your question. Or, or Prem, you can, what you can do is, uh, this is uh, just the start uh, that you have interacted with me. You can send me a mail with any questions that you have, then I can return back to you. But obviously those questions, yeah, you will put, put questions in a, in, in a mail and, and just uh, just let me know the, uh, the, um, the standard of the student, first year or second standard or third standard, right? Which year he belongs to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, I have one question to all. Did you like my teaching? Yes. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, sir, when you, uh, when you said that, um, <clears throat> in that case, uh, when uh, we need to differentiate our memory location, uh, uh, to avoid this type of attacks like uh, BIDAS, Trojan, and uh, OMS. Uh, um, so we need to uh, what? We need to what? We need to store our uh, our program uh, in different way, right? No, 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 no. That is not what I said. What I said was there is no mechanism in the universal model that will follow in our computation. There is no mechanism to say that this is a good program and that is a bad program, right? A program is a program. Yes. The, the only mechanism that their model says is, okay, this is a line of code and this is a data. Because if it is a line of code, the action would be to execute it in the accumulator of your CPU. And if it is data, it should be taken from the CPU and put in some, way, some other register, some storage registers, right, of the CPU. But there is no mechanism to, to distinguish between a good program and a bad program. A good program or a bad program is nowhere written. That's the, that's the problem. That makes the model universal, but, but that makes the model vulnerable also. So what I said was the whole virus family, the whole worms family, the whole family of uh, memory-based memory attacks 
come from this fact that the model is universal and there is no way to distinguish between a good instruction and a bad instruction right so somehow if the attacker can manage to replace a good instruction with a bad instruction now what i mean by good instruction and a bad instruction what is an instruction instruction says that okay go to some part of memory and and fetch some data right or instruction says you have to add some numbers or instruction says yeah so it may be a memory pointer instruction may be uh, it refers to some some other memory location or it may be a real instruction like you add something right you you subtract something using your real you so if i replace that instruction if i am an attacker and i replace that instruction with some other instruction for example the original instruction was asking me to go to some some memory location where i can expect to find some good instruction but now i replace that instruction and say that okay don't go to that memory but go to some other memory right and in that some other memory you have the start location of your virus program the whole virus program is loaded in that memory location so if that bad instruction is executed the cpu doesn't know what he has done he will directly shift the shift the control to that location in memory from where the whole virus program is stored right and the cpu will execute all lines of um uh, all lines of uh, yeah, the bad yeah, program okay. yes yeah yeah instructions what my point and, and 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 mechanisms to do such things are shell codes you have heard of shell codes you have heard of rootkits yes, yeah rootkits yes, yeah sir. yeah 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 so with shell codes and rootkits you can you can you can launch such attacks but generally all the virus family uh, are based Based on this obviously this vulnerability of the universal nature of the design, got it? Yeah. Any other question anybody has? Sir, uh, sir, am yes. I audible? I am Asit Naik. Yeah, bolo. Uh, sir, um, um, a very common question usually asked uh, that. Uh, Uh, if uh, the security if we look at the security concerns of the operating systems yeah. then it is often asked that uh, uh, linux and uh, windows linux versus windows this type of uh-huh. comparison comes 